Hi, my name is Tegan Moss from Love on Fire and you're watching Hallmark Happenings. Amazing. Okay. Well, I'm so excited to chat. I was looking over your IMDb and oh my gosh, you've been doing this forever. You have so many amazing credits. I was just like, wow, she is a veteran of the acting world entertainment industry. Um, Before we talk all about this lovely movie, which I just watched, I would love to talk about how you got into acting because you've just, you've been on a roll for like 30 years. It's amazing. <laughs> it's been a while now. Yeah. I was very, very fortunate to be a child actor. I, I feel like it was such a gift you know, I had all these amazing experiences and I went places and I did things that a lot of kids didn't get the opportunity to. So I'm super, super grateful. And it's actually my brother who got me into it. So I'm not sure if you know my brother, he's in some Hallmark movies as well, Jesse, um, but he always wanted to be an actor. And so he kind of begged my parents, like, please let me do this. And so they finally gave in and he went out and he started auditioning and I was always in tow and I was like, oh my gosh, this looks amazing. I want to do it too. And so they got me an agent and I booked my first commercial and the rest is history. Oh, wow. That's so cool. Yeah. I, your brother, I was like doing my little research and I was like, oh, he's in one of my favorite Hallmark movies, uh, Moonlight in Vermont. So yeah, he's super successful as well. That's really cool. <laughs> Yeah, I'm very lucky. We were very close and we've been in, I think it's seven different projects together. Uh, only a couple of times playing brother and sister too, just happened to be cast together and I love working with them. Oh, wow. You don't hear that too often. That's so cool. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. neat. So um, I guess you've been doing this like forever. Is there like, besides that, is there, did you ever watch something on TV and be like, I want to do that. I want to be like those people on my screens. <laughs> That's really interesting because I feel like, because I started when I was six, I feel like that was kind of my first introduction, you know, because before that you're really watching cartoons. So my memories of wanting to do it were some really incredible experiences. Like, I remember I screen tested for a little princess and they flew me down to, to Los Angeles. Um, and it was between me and Liesl Matthews who ended up getting the role. We became very good friends. And I got to work with Alfonso Carême for two weeks and they dressed me up in the costumes and I got to be on set and I got to experience the whole thing. So I think when I fantasized about like wanting to be in the movies, it was actually like that experience from that side of the camera. Oh, what an incredible story. That's amazing. Wow. You were like, you were at the top, one of their very top picks and what a cool experience. They really liked you then. Yeah. You know, it's funny though, because when you look back on it, I'm so grateful that I didn't get that role because I had a very normal childhood and I am so grateful for that as well. You know, I feel like my mom and my dad, they really raised us really grounded and, you know, who knows what fame could do to you like that at a young age. So I feel, I feel I feel grateful for every decision that's made. Everything happens for a reason. Yeah. And, you know, I think sometimes like, um, I don't know if you've ever watched the middle, it was like the big TV series a few years back, but the actor who played the dad, he's like, I'm so glad that people like, don't like recognize me on the streets, even though I've been working for like what, 30, 40 years. And I'm like, this is my job. I don't have to do anything else. He's like, it's kind of nice. And like the other actors who are just like probably mobbed, that would be crazy. You still get normalcy in your life. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I can't even imagine. Well, you, you did mention like when you were little, you watched cartoons, you have done voice acting and some pretty cool stuff, Serena, the teenage witch and Polly pocket and tons of other stuff. I was just going on and on. Could you talk a little bit about that? Oh yeah. Voice acting is so much fun. Uh, I was very fortunate again to do some series when I was younger. And then I ended up doing more series like um, Inspector Gadget. I played Penny, which is now the name of my dog. Interestingly, not on purpose, but, um, and then I did, yes, Polly and Polly Pocket. And the thing I love about voice acting is that, you know, when you go into the room, it's a lot less stressful than being on a film set because everyone can just have fun. You can do many, many takes and people are hilarious and they're all doing different voices and you're playing around in the booth together. Um, so I feel really, really grateful for that. Uh, it's just, it's a lot of fun and you get, to, you get to know the same people because, you know, there's key people in the industry that can do 12 different voices. So it's amazing watching them as well transform themselves. 
Yeah, absolutely. It's like, I can imagine you can kind of, it's not so much about like appearances. You're just there like having fun with your voice, doing these different things. It's so cool. And you, I just can't believe how many projects you've been a part of. I talked to, it's so funny, um, Emily Tennant, and she's like the current voice of Polly Pocket. And then yes. you were like the original voice. That's so crazy. Yes. I love Emily. She's so, so sweet. We did garage sale mysteries together. Um, and I know we're, we know a lot of the same people. She's lovely. And I don't think it could have gone to a better person. So that's great. Passing the torch. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. She did. A, she showed like one of the characters. Oh, I can't talk. She did an example of Polly's voice when I talked to her and I was just like, oh, that's just the coolest thing. Do you remember <laughs> how to do Polly's voice? <laughs> I, I, you know, it's funny. I remember once somebody asked me to do the voice for their kid for their birthday to say hello from Polly Pocket. And that was back, you know, before I had kids, but cut to now and I've got boys and they love Johnny Test. And one of the actors I worked with in a project earlier this year is Andrew Francis, who of course is in Chesapeake Shores as well and does a million voices. And he's one of the voices in Johnny Test. So I got him to do a little hello to my son and I got such a kick out of it so I do still remember a little bit of the Polly voice but it's probably very different than Emily's you know each <laughs> each time they redo the series it's a, a new twist oh 100 percent yeah that's so, so cool I just like it's such a long lasting thing who would have thought the little cute little tiny Polly pockets would become like what 25 years later it's still going and you know another thing I feel like a lot of the PBS uh kids cartoons and animated series all recorded in Canada I don't know if you've noticed yes. that but it's just like so many of them do and I'm just like that's crazy there is a huge voice industry here. It's so great. And you know, it seems to be only growing. We're very lucky. So yeah, there's so many, so much great talent up in Canada, it, not just on camera, but voice as well. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're we are, you know, there's talented people here and I'm, it's nice of you to recognize that. So thank you. <laughs> that means a lot to all of us Canadians. Oh, absolutely. It's amazing. I'm like uh, everyone who's born in Canada and wants to act. I feel like they really have a leg up compared to people maybe in the U S because so many amazing projects from there. And you've been in so much stuff, the Hallmark channel, like all over the place. So yeah, congratulations on all of your success. Thank you so much. I, I, you know, for the last few years, I have been doing a lot of Hallmark and I really love, love doing those movies. For me personally, the point I am in my life when I have kids and, you know, I want, I want to do feel good stories. I want to do stories that my kids can watch, that my in-laws can watch, that just bring more joy to people's world. I, I, you know, life is, life is hard, life is tough. And like, if I can be a part of just helping someone escape and, and just smile or laugh, it's, it's great. And, and I will say too, that being on the sets here in Canada is such a joy as well. There's a different tone to the Hallmark sets. Everyone's just like, really grateful and happy to be there and they really get along and you know they're pretty quick the the length of time that we film so I think that people aren't you know tired or worn out they kind of come to to these projects with like fresh energy and I yeah I absolutely love them Oh, I've actually heard that multiple times. Everyone says these, just the sets for Hallmark movies are just so positive. So I, I you can just tell watching the movies, it seems positive and it is off the screen as well. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And then we're going to talk about your movie, which actually aired on Up TV. So that's kind of fun to kind of differentiate a little bit because they have some great original movies as well. Love on Fire was adorable. I just loved every second of it. It just came out. But I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about getting to be a part of that project and how that opportunity came about. Absolutely. Well, thank you, first of all, for watching. And I'm so glad you enjoyed it. It was such an amazing project for me. Uh, first of all, I would say that working with Christy was such a pleasure. I had known about Christy for, for quite a few years and we have some mutual friends, but we never had the opportunity to work together. And she's just such an inspiration. She's, you know, this very strong female presence in our industry. And, and she's really carved her own way in a lot of ways. So I loved, I loved working with her and I loved being able to play a role with another you know, female lead who was trying to make a difference. And um, I, 
And then of course, working with Devon was so much fun because he's hilarious. So he just brought such fun energy and Loretta and I have worked together before. So it was just like old friends coming together immediately and we're catching up like that woman is just so amazing inside and out. She's so sweet, so kind. Um, and getting to meet Chris and, and working with little Adina, like it was just such an amazing group that Christy brought together. Um, and then the other thing that was really neat for me was just about the whole storyline about the inclusive playgrounds, because I actually have a mom friend that at the time that I was filming, she was fighting for an elevator to get put into our kids school because our school is going through this renovation and they were, you know, they're spending millions and millions of dollars on this renovation, but they weren't putting an elevator and her son's going to be in a wheelchair his whole life. So it was actually the day that I finished filming that she got approval to get the elevator put into the building. So I felt like, you know, it was just such an alignment. So it, I, I get kind of, I get goosebumps when I talk about that because, you know, it's one thing to do a film and then it's one thing to, to see people that are really actually suffering from these problems and, you know, the impact it has on their kids and their family and then seeing something like that get passed through. Oh my gosh. And I think like the, the school, um, administration and everything they have to think about it's not just one child it's so many other children who will end up needing to use it and these school buildings they stand for up to 100 years if not longer so it could just be in use for so many different kids and be so helpful I'm so glad she got that pass that's amazing yeah absolutely and you know the, and the playground thing as well I think you know as a parent who I'm so fortunate to have kids that are able they you know, I didn't think about it as much before. I didn't think about how, you know, playgrounds have stairs and not ramps and how that can really leave people out. And so actually, again, the playground at our school is not an inclusive playground and there's only a few in town. So, so she's fighting for that now too. And, you know, it's just, it takes such strength for these parents that are, that are fighting for something for their kids. So to even, you know, be a part of telling that story to a greater audience was, was really meaningful. Oh, it was such a sweet, like a nice addition. And again, like being more inclusive and letting everybody be involved. That was so great. And little girl who played uh, Loretta and they called him Mo, uh, their child yes. was so sweet. And I just, yeah, it, was, it made the whole story just like so well-rounded and everything was like so connected. It was perfect. And I was going to say something. Oh goodness. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Those two girls were just so sweet because, uh, as you know, they're friends in real life. So they just ran around just being kids and having fun. And that energy was actually caught on camera. And yeah, it was it was so much fun to be around. They were just goofing off and dancing. And yeah, it was great. And Adina herself, you know, for being her first role, she was just such a pro and she had such personality. And I think Christy did an amazing job bringing that out on camera and especially the chemistry between her and Devon. It was just so cute. It really was cute. Like when she first showed up the door, she's like, I can dance or something like that. And she's dancing. I was like, oh, that's so sweet. So sweet. Yeah. Like, I mean, when you're acting opposite her you don't need to act at all right <laughs> you just take her in it's like she's just so sweet oh 100 percent. I mean like when I saw this movie I, a few weeks back I saw that it was going to be in the lineup for the July movies on TV. I was like this cast is incredible I couldn't get over it I just was like my goodness they just brought so many amazing people together I want to talk about First, before we get to your love interest, let's talk about working with Loretta. She was so funny. That scene when y'all first meet, I was just like, she, she's so different on when calls the heart. I don't know if you watched that, but she's, she's a very different character. And to see her like this, I was like, she's so funny. She's so funny. I remember when we filmed that first scene when she comes in and she introduces herself and she's just this, this whirlwind of energy. And I remember at one point filming and just like, forgetting that I was on camera because I was just taking her in, you know, because she was so captivating to watch. And, you know, she, she's just a professional through and through. Like she really, she works hard on her craft and, and it's obvious you can see it. Be, being able to embody a completely different character and you two work so well together. I just like, every time y'all were on the screen together, I was like, oh, this is such a fun friendship. <laughs> Honestly, like I, if I could spend every day with Loretta, I would, she is just she's that type of person, you know, like she just, she, she cares. She wears her heart on her sleeve. She's passionate. She's professional and she's just so kind through and through. So yeah, I felt very, very grateful to be reunited with her. 
Oh, the qualities of a wonderful person. I just love that. And y'all, y'all both are so sweet. So I'm glad y'all had fun making this. And then we'll talk about, well, before we talk about this, I, when I talked to Christy, she said there was a reference to a movie in this film. And I was like, oh, okay, I wonder what reference that'll be. And then I saw it when you're doing the nails and prompting young woman, I was like, my goodness, that is like so outside of the Hallmark world. What, yes. Had you seen the movie and what were your thoughts yes. when you saw that in the script? Yeah, no, I mean, we definitely knew when we were filming that, that it was like pushing the boundaries of, of what is, is normally referred to, but can't get rid of nail paint. So, you know, she wanted it in there and, and I agree. And I think it's like, it's a nice, it's a nice touch. Now dealing with the rainbow nails, like <laughs> then we had to take them on, take them off because of continuity. That was another thing, but uh, no, it was really, it was, you know, it's like Christy putting her signature on some projects and I like that. Oh, absolutely. Something that when you're watching it, you're like, that's a Christie movie. That was so yeah. clever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Also about the continuity. You're like, wait, which order, which color did I have on my nails? You have to go in the Roy G. Bib to make sure you have the right order. <laughs> yeah. And just how quickly you move. Right. So getting it on and off, but luckily we didn't have to do it too many times. I think I, I had them on again for the boxing scene, which was also, that was one of the, the funnest scenes to film. Devon still has my boxing gloves. I have to get them back from him, <laughs> but we, um, that scene was not originally written as a boxing scene. I forget what it was written as. It was something else. And Devon's a boxer. Um, and I like to box too. I'm not as good as Devon. Devon is much more of a professional boxer, but I've always boxed a little. And my brother and I have always boxed. So I and my son at the time was in karate. So he had the little red boxing gloves. So it was kind of a last minute thing. So I brought those for Adina to wear. And then I had my boxing gloves and it was just a fun, fun scene. It was a fun scene. You were getting into it with all those punches. I was like, whoa, go. <laughs> I was like, how is this going to show up on film? Because like, I think I'm so serious. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> like how it actually looks. I'm not so sure, but yeah, it was fun to film. <laughs> That's fun. I like how it just kind of came to be and it wasn't planned. That's super cool. And then, okay, we're talking about you and Devon. I feel like you, both of y'all are such amazing actors and to see y'all both now in lead roles was so exciting because I just love when you finally see these people have been working so hard and having such great supporting roles, finally get the lead roles. So I just wanted to take, talk about like you and Devon kind of working together and really having the light shine on both of y'all. Yeah, you know, he was just like such a sweetheart through and through. We we met up prior to filming to, to meet each other because it's always weird the first day on set and being like, hello. Um, and, you know, we had a great time. We hit it off right away. And then it was really nice the first day we were actually filming on set because we were doing a lot of those running scenes. Uh, I think actually the first day we had to do our first kiss scene. But the fact that there was like um, there was energy in the scene and we were moving around like kind of allowed us to just free up and and just kind of let go and just let you know ourselves be ourselves and and so, sorry my dog is here. that's absolutely um, fine. <laughs> uh, and yeah, and then he was just, and he's just such a great guy and he was hilarious. Like, and he'd do these comedic things and he's such, he's funny cause like, he's not a morning person. So sometimes he'd come in the trailer in the morning, like he's, he just was like, I'm tired. And then suddenly he'd like break out into his comedy and it's kind of unexpected. And then also so entertaining. And yeah, he brought a lot of, a lot of fun to the set. Oh, you could just tell it was just like watching this whole movie wasn't only sweet. It was like, there was an energy about it. It was really fun. So I loved that. And then the whole firefighter thing was fun because we don't see too much of that. I can only think of like what um, the nine lives of Christmas, that Christmas movie with the firefighters. There's not too many of them. So that was a really nice thing to see something different. Yeah. And you know, what was really great about that too, is that we were filming in a working fire station. So there was real firefighters all around us. And sometimes we'd have to pause because all the alarms would go off and the fire truck would pull out. And I felt like, um, you know, it was like a responsibility telling the story of what firefighters actually live like. And then, so to be surrounded by them while filming was it just added another layer of like of depth to what we were doing but also really entertaining just from the child and me to be filming in a fire station <laughs> it was really neat and then the the photos for the calendar there was a real dalmatian there and i was like that's yeah. too cool <laughs> yeah i know i don't think i had ever met a real dalmatian before that so it was yeah it was great to have the dog there it was oh, this day. adds more authenticity to what you think of when you think of firefighters <laughs> yeah 
Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. It was definitely, uh, and there were like a lot of like serious moments we threw out with the sweet moments. So it all just like came together. And I think movies like they do that are so much more like enjoyable because you just get taken on this like emotional journey with the characters and you all did such a great job. Like, especially you, like these emotional moments, I was like, oh, you just kind of, you just felt like your heart was breaking sometimes when you were saying your lines. Oh, that's so sweet of you. Thank you. Yeah. You know, I think, um, especially the older I get as an actress, you know, it's the truth that a lot of people do have these backstories, right? And they do, they have experienced some trauma or some pain. So I think that that was just the the level that made it real, you know, and and made these connections so much more important because it was, it's a different type of love. I would say, you know, that, that those two characters were experiencing is love after loss and the fact that they could bond over that. I think that's an important story to tell. And, you know, also that there is hope and that there is, there can be a, a life after a, an experience like that. So again, I feel like as much as it, as it can be like a funny, you know, barbecue laughing movie, it also holds a lot of weight in, in, in terms of connecting to people and their stories. Actually, you know what, as I said that, I just remembered that um, one of the makeup artists on set, it was her first time being head and she she didn't she, she didn't fully understand what the script was about when she had first picked it up. And then because she came on very last minute and then suddenly she realized that she herself had gone through almost the exact same story. And she was in that next stage of her life when she was getting remarried, but she, her the love of her life had, had passed away. So, you know, there was some tearful moments on set for her. And I sat with her every single morning in the chair, you know, and we talked about how, what a what an important story this is. And and again, a a responsibility and and yeah, it made it more real. Well, I hope this movie helped her along with anyone else who was kind of going through something similar, kind of be able to get like refreshed for an energy for life and uh, just be able to kind of move on in a positive way. So it's, yeah, definitely lots and lots of great messages. Such a nice movie. I just loved it. I wanted to um, ask you before we start wrapping up, if you have any other projects in the works that you can talk about. I have a movie coming out, but it's the Christmas movie and I can't say anything more about it. So you'll have to stay tuned around Christmas and um, yeah. It was really fun to film, met some really amazing people. And again, yeah, it, it was just a joy to film. Oh, that's I, can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to hear more. Yeah. I, who doesn't love a good Christmas movie? Well, I hope you had fun making it. Sounds like you did. <laughs> yes. Yes. It was so much fun. Well, more to come on that, but we'll go ahead and finish up with a quick rapid fire question session. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. What is the last show you binge watched? uh hacks oh what's that i haven't heard of it hacks is a movie about uh, a comedian and an older comedian and this young comedy writer that they kind of pair up in las vegas and yeah it's it's fantastic it's really funny oh definitely gotta watch that have you seen on um, the marvelous mrs Maisel? yes i love that show i love that okay show. So i was good. like comedy so i was like you might like that <laughs> yes no i i have binge watched that as well so great uh yes absolutely okay and then um what is your favorite ice cream flavor uh chocolate chip mint oh that's a good one you can't go wrong it's like christmas but all year round <laughs> yes and like refreshing you get that chocolate hit yeah oh yeah it's like what are those called York peppermint patties. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Those are so good. Oh, definitely. And then where's the place you'd like to visit that you haven't yet had the chance to travel to? Um, uh, well, actually, I'm so excited because we're hoping to go next year, but there's a little area above Portugal that's part of Spain. And I'm going to say it wrong. It's Galicia or Galicia. I, I had I'd never heard of it before. And we have some friends from Spain because my husband and I used to live in the United Arab Emirates and, um, and we also used to live in Jakarta. And we had some friends from there that are Spanish. And so they just bought a house there and I had never seen it before. And I looked up photos and it was absolutely stunning. And I just feel... I feel silly that I didn't know about it before. So now I'm so excited to go there and, and see what it's all about. 
Oh my gosh, what a fun trip. That'll be amazing. You've got to post pictures on your Instagram so people I can know. see this beautiful I, place. I'm so bad at posting on my Instagram. I'm so sorry. I will get better. <laughs> I promise. But if I go, I will post photos for you. Oh, that's so cool. I've never even heard of that. But yeah, it sounds like Spain and Portugal would be pretty. I, I just don't know much about that. For some reason, I forget it's over there. Yeah, you know, I've done Spain before. I've done it a couple times, but I've never been to Portugal. So we're going to combo that trip and take our kids and it'll be the first big trip abroad with our kids. And I'm, I'm just so excited to show them and give them that experience of seeing other cultures. Oh, they're going to be like, whoa, this is nuts. That's so cool. You're going to have so much fun. Yeah. I love that. Well, um, thank you so much for chatting, Tegan. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. You're, you're so lovely. And thank you for watching and for being a fan. It, it really means a lot. Oh my gosh, of course. I have an awesome rest of your day and congratulations thank on everything. You. Thank you so much. It was lovely chatting with you. You too. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. If you love all things up TV, Hallmark channel, GAC family, basically all of your made for TV movie channels, click that subscribe button. So you don't miss out on any of the previews, the recaps, or the interviews until next time. Thank you so much for listening to Hallmark Happenings. Have a great day.